welcome to the second part of sending emails using SendGrid and Node.js and also GraphQL. So at the at the previous in the previous video we actually built uh, the entire uh, all of the functionalities. We created the GraphQL server. We tested it out using GraphQL Playground and it all seems to work. And we are, so there are some setup uh, needed in order to you know host it on Heroku. So let's do all those changes in order to host that on Heroku. In this part, we're going to be hosting our API onto Heroku and just testing whether it works or not. So if you guys are new to this series, uh, we're actually building a email kind of email service kind of thing. So you can send the emails using GraphQL, SendGrid, uh, SendGrid and Node.js. We're also using GraphQL together with that. And we're also building a front end in order to front end uh, having a contact form. So we can integrate that using Apollo client and then send emails. Okay, so one thing there, there were a couple of errors in what we are doing uh, according to Heroku setup. So what we have to do first of all is to in import dot env and then config dot env, config dot env because when we are using it in the resolvers, we aren't able to access it because we don't have access to the env files. So we have to config it right here. And right now, let's go ahead and create a new application using Heroku. So first of all, what you would have to do is go to Heroku and click on the first link. So you would have to sign in or sign up basically depending on whether you have already logged in or not. So let's click on new. Let's click on create new app. Let's say YouTube email service. Let's create app, choose a region, it doesn't matter. Let's you know, so if you have if you, you have if you're new to Heroku, if you have not done any of the CLI stuff, you would have to install the Heroku CLI but with just this link and then type in Heroku login in your Visual Studio Code or the terminal that you are using, and then it will redirect you to the browser, then you just log in uh, log in on the browser and then it will redirect you back to the terminal and then you can you know run these commands and get all this stuff working. So first of all, you have to initialize a Git repository. Let's, so let's just do that. I've already done it, but let's just delete it. Okay, so I'll initialize a new repository. And then I would have to run this particular command that Heroku gives me. So let me run that. It's gonna take some time because it's gonna uh, make some calls with the Heroku API or something. So let's add it and then commit and then push to Heroku master basic uh, git uh, commands so git add and git commit let's say initial commit and let's push to Heroku master so this is not actually github it's Heroku's git so we would have to you know push it to Heroku and then the branch name that we're using so as well uh, as that is going to you know host the api what i want to actually say is actually when we host the api it will actually give you a link on here or heroku will actually give you a link so we won't be actually able to run the query on the browser so some people might already have known that but for some who didn't we won't be able to do that on the browser because we have to pass the query that we need it's going to be a long kind of string with a gql tag so we have to do that so we can't do it in the browser you would have to create you know use apollo client and do that so when we click on the link it's gonna say it's gonna give us an error saying get query missing or some error so that's just one thing to do and you know look out for so we won't be able to use the link so like rest apis yeah like you can uh, kind of test them on the browser the get queries you can test them on the browser you can do that on uh, graphql so let's click on the link let's see if it's working okay as you guys can see get query missing because we don't have a get query or most of them are post post methods so if we go to overview all of the stuff should be right but one thing is that we need to have the same grid api key on our heroku uh heroku env file because one thing if you guys might have known is that dot env files don't get uploaded onto git git any 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 version control system that we're using integrated with git github or gitlab or heroku in our case so we would have to initialize that inside of git so let me go to settings reveal config wars so the key should be send grid api key 
so this will basically act as a dot env file so we should pass any e, any any values that we have in our dot env file we should actually take them and put them right here on heroku so it will actually work properly so i guess that is pretty much it the port we don't actually need to port it because it's not going to run the uh, api and localhost port 4000 it will run it on some some random port or let's go to the logs and check mm. so it's running on a different port localhost 53247 which if we copy and paste won't actually work because this is not running on a local server it's running on uh, a remote re a remote server something like aws or something it's running on a different server on a different computer you can say on a different terminal on a different computer so it won't work on our, uh, our side so this port is going to work for this particular domain so that's how hero is going to do it so that's pretty much it guys the api is hosted the backend stuff is done for now in our other uh, in our next videos we'll be using uh, telvin css and react we're going to set up all the stuff apollo client the links the cache all the stuff and then get started with sending emails using using uh, by also designing a contact form you might get some inspiration from dribble or something the design is totally up to you you guys can customize it do anything you guys want but we're going to be just building a simple contact form and then using apollo client we'll be sending emails and verifying loading symbols if there's an errors errors we'll put a snack bar to it all those stuff custom snack bars also that's pretty much it so i also have a plan of doing uh, custom components using telvin css tutorials for that so if you guys are interested just let me know in the comments down below also leave a like on this video if you liked it please subscribe to the channel guys it would be really helpful thank you so much for watching if you guys have any video ideas it would be uh, i would really appreciate if you guys leave them in the comments but then that's pretty much it guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next one peace